And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for another historic deck. We have a donation deck here for some mono black crisis. Sorry, we got mono black control that has hydroid crisis as a top end finisher. Because hydroid crisis is just a, a great card in the late game, right? If you have a deck designed on getting to the late game and then having a lot of mana, hydroid crisis is just one of the best cards you can draw. Um, on Magic Arena, so in Historic. You know, it's a huge flying trample creature, and it gains life and draws cards. So what else do you need? So we're playing our Mono Black Control, where we are splashing for Hydro Crisis with the help of eight blue and eight green lands. So we do need one of each. So we have to draw one of the, the eight blues and one of the eight greens. We have some cards to help us get there, though. We have Phyrexian Arena, of course, that... Gets us an extra card every turn. This will help us dig through our deck to look for one of the blue, one of the green mana. And we also got four Dread Presence, which is the real big payoff for staying mono black. And each swamp, we can, you know, draw extra cards and lose life or, you know, do damage and gain life also. We have, it, you know, you may think that we only have seven swamps, but remember the Watery Graves are swamps and Overgrown Tombs are swamps. So we have 15 swamps in here to trigger Dread Presence. I think Mindstone is just going to be an all-star in this deck. I think this is going to be like our best turn two play of Mindstone and then starting to play like Chupacabra on three or Dread Presence on three and, and so on and just kind of get to the top end of the deck right away. Um, another cool card in here, we got Clackbridge Troll. Um, <clears throat> you can kind of think of this as like a Planeswalker. It's five mana where it's like a five mana thing where your first activation is just you gain three life draw card. Right. And then, you know, because they're just sacking their goats. It's like you gain three life draw card every turn. The life gain is critical with uh, Phyrexian Arena, um, you know, with, with the life loss from that. So that life gain is critical there. If they don't make you basically clock virtual, if they basically don't sacrifice a creature, then you're kind of. Uh, required to attack because if they're not sacrificing a creature then they think their life total is high enough that they don't really mind if you attack and so it is kind of like either um attack you know it's a planeswalker that's like either attack with an 8-8 trampler or you gain three life and draw a card and it is the opponent's decision but of course we can we can make a bunch of goats and then we can have like something like ritual of soot or legion's end that can clear away those goats as well uh, top end, we got a Liliana, we got an Ugin, just some other strong cards to help finish games out. What's up, Magic Pockets? Thanks for getting that resub in here. But there we go. That's So that's our deck. Uh, Mono Black Krasis. We got a couple of Return to Natures in case of Wilderness Reclamation, Fires of Invention, stuff like that. Some more anti-aggro with Moment of Craving, some more anti-questing beast with Noxious Grasp. Ashiok good against Control and Kethis combo. Same with Duress good against Control. Um, and then an extra Ritual of Soot and an extra Top End Ugin. So we're going to be playing over in Ranked. That's the way to play. Best 2 out of 3 for Historic. So here we go. Let's play some Mono Black Crisis. We'll play 5 matches over there. Let's see how we do. We're at number 246. We'll see where, where we're at after five matches. Uh, let's see. So Pockets sub, we're up to number 11. Um, you don't love having the Hydro Crisis in your opener, of course. It's like your top end card, but it's fine. We need to draw Woodland Cemetery or Overgrown Tomb. All right, Esper Control, right away, we're going to be sideboarding in about 10 cards against Esper Control. I'm playing the Drown Catacomb next. We want to get these lands that are not swamps in play, which I guess I could have. I guess Watery Graves is swamp, so I could have just played it anyway. Yeah, we want to get these lands in play before Dread Presence and save the swamps.
Zedalom! Getting the gifted sub from Santa Boot. Thank you very much there, Boot, for the gifted sub. Historic is, is basically just aggro and Esper control. And so it makes a lot of sense to have your main deck against aggro and then your sideboard against Esper control. Because those are the... Those are really what you're facing in Historic right now. So like all these cards, you know, Ritual Sets, Legion's Ends after sideboard are going to be a lot better for us. But that's the main pull of playing Esper Control is that you get a free game one win almost all of the time. And then you just have to scrounge together one of the two games two and three. Another card we're sideboarding out, Chupacabra. We've drawn four cards we're sideboarding out. I don't think I play a third creature into Akaya's Wrath. But unfortunately, they found Ascanta. No, I've never done that, Circles. I don't really know what that means, but I have not done that. I right, let's skip to the good part. So I like our chances games two and three when you know when we don't have all these dead cards.
I don't, I don't. Okay, yeah, maybe other people have methods. Yeah, I don't have any method to archive decks whenever I run out of space. I just, um, because I, I just have them uploaded to, to YouTube, like, with different videos. All right, get to rest. All these things. Grasp still isn't so bad. That's really not so bad either. I'm not sure if we're going to be playing all of those. Maybe three grasp. But yeah, you know, killing Teferi is important. This killing, you know, this kills Ascanta. So it's basically, do we want to play something that basically all it does is kill Ascanta? I guess it could get rid of a Chemist's Insight from a graveyard also. We have Ashiok that kind of slows down Ascanta. No, let's let's not play it. All right, this deck looks a lot better <laughs> than the cards we were drawing. Yeah, no, Eccles, I understand what a raid is. I don't know what what purple means. Oh, oh, people. Oh, people. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry, I, I missed that correct to people. Um, but sometimes, not not usually. Purple people eaters. Aw. Now I wish I would have kept the troll instead of the rider. Mm. Dispute counters Ashiok. I wanted to take Ascanta, but... Troll! <laughs> yeah, get rid of those spells. So I'm sure they'll have Teferi bounce the troll. And they're playing four absorbs. A lot of absorbs. This isn't a fight you can win. And so they're gonna have a lot of food to sacrifice to the troll. And then they'll have the castles. They'll have even more. Wow. Not sacrificing. You. I Don't worry, I got this.
Darn. So we get that inside out of here. Cool. Got a lot of counter spells over there. My plan was was basically for the next turn to then then murderous rider the Teferi, hope they absorb it and then hope to resolve another Ashiok. That was basically my plan for the next turn. But yeah, we saw four absorbs, we saw Dovin's veto, we saw a mystical dispute. They had duress and thought erasure. Got a lot of stuff over there. They don't seem to have much to finish games out, though, if we can get Ashiok in play and just you know, basically exile 20 cards from the library. <laughs> yeah, Chemistry's Insights and Absorbs. Yeah, that's old school Esper. We just gotta draw one land. And there's 24 left, because... Just gotta draw one, then we get our mind stone going. Opponent doesn't have too many lands either. They got a bunch of counter spells though. We need to draw duress. Oh, they didn't take Ashiok. Come on, we need to draw duress. 
Oh, wait, no. Both of those would counter Ashiok even if we duress now, actually. Like, that's going to get countered by Drowning in the Lock. Anyway, but it keeps them from activating us, can't uh... Now we're drawing way too many lands. That's a... I guess that's six lands in a row that we've drawn. I'm hoping they boarded out all their sweepers if they got all these vetoes and absorbs and drown in the locks. Maybe they boarded out sweepers? That's seven, seven lands in a row for us. <laughs> yeah. I want for that one lander. I'm known for my excellent fight. This might be a bad idea. So basically all I'm doing here is I'm trading Murderous Rider for the Ascanta activation. Dang. Now I really wish I would not have done that. Castle is incredible. Wow, that's incredible. Because basically I was I was, tra I was trading the Murderous Rider with their best card out of their top four, which is what the Ascanta activation is. How that castle is just incredible. GG. Yeah, we can't we can't beat as as Kanta and Castle together. I mean, maybe we draw Krasis that gets us more cards. Like that's that's our hope is drawing crisis. I think right now. <laughs> Stupid drowned catacomb.
The good part about Clackbridge Troll for my opponent is they don't have to activate the castle. <clears throat> Ascanta is just absolutely amazing. So we learned with our Fires of Invention decks whenever we played them before. Ascanta is just incredible. Yeah, we're playing mono black. We want Krasis. Well, that shuts down Krasis. Yeah, so like there's four absorbs, three, I guess we saw two vetoes, three drown in the lock. Yeah, just, we have no chance of resolving anything. Ascanta's too good. They had to turn two Ascanta on the play. That and I drew <clears throat> all those lands, you know, like those seven lands in a row really didn't help. But yeah, the Mystical Disputes too. That's a tough one. All right, Blue Jin, have a good night. Red Presence in play. It doesn't die to Ritual of Soot. So it would only kill one creature. It'd only just kill the Dauntless Bodyguard right now. It's not ideal. That was a very good play against Ritual of Set. <clears throat> hmm. So I didn't double block the elephant because I wanted the Dauntless Bodyguard out of there because it would it would still protect their vener venerable knight through a, a ritual of soot. Come on. Another venerate Luxodon? Get out of 
my way. Six one blocker that's lethal. Playing the Clackbird Troll is going to be lethal. This is lethal now again because that thing does just enough damage without Venelish Marshal. Good hand. And Venerated Luxodon. That card's rough. Things just didn't go, didn't go too well for us there. I'm not sure if like not like I'm not sure about Clackbridge Troll. Like I just don't know if it's if it's something that we really want in this kind of matchup or not. I wish we had a fourth Chupacabra in the sideboard. Chupacabra just seems like the like the best thing ever. The dread presence has been really disappointing. We haven't been able to be trick we haven't been triggering it like at all. Hey Anatran, good evening. Good morning. That's true. Benelish Marshall can turn the goats into battle goats. That's a good, good point there. Let's see how this does. Not too well. Perfect. I guess we just do that right now. I don't think we have to be, like, we don't have to be worried about, um, oh, come on. I guess that's something else to, to kill there. I believe in you. I say there's, like, there's no Vela somewhere in their deck, but because of Venerated Luxodon. Legion, did you see the match against Esper where we drew, um, you know, seven straight lands? Your we necessarily need more. I mean, we got 20, 25 is usually pretty good. Plus, you know, we got the four Mind Stones also. All right, I could use a land here. Gosh, this Dread Presence is, just keeps looking bad. Uh, Troll and Dread Presence. These cards do not look good at all. Was it just lethal? Guess we're going to have to draw. We need to play Ugin.
So I think that mono black control with Hydroid Crisis could be good, but Dread Presence and Clackbridge Troll have looked really poor. I feel like we need to just be like a more of a like a, a real control deck. With more planeswalkers, you know, like Karns and stuff like that. More removal, more Karns. Yes, Troll second main was lethal. They had they had Devout Decree in hand. Their last card in hand that we knew about because the Legion's End was Devout Decree. <clears throat> we haven't had any help either from our from our mana situations, though, to be fair. Our mana has not helped us in the slightest. So a big red deck. I don't even know like how good Ritual of Sit's gonna be. I mean, I guess Return to Nature can destroy fires of invention if that card is important and it can exile a rekindling phoenix that's in the graveyard and yeah they may have experimental frenzy okay we actually get to hit land drops <clears throat> Haven't been doing that in a while. <laughs> we'll never trigger Dread Presence ever. I'm just, yeah, so basically, instead of me playing the Dread Presence and then, li then, and then them lightning striking it, I can just wait a turn, play the presence, and trigger it with the Overgrown Tomb. Alright, Dread Presence finally did something. Hooray. We have we have 15 swamps and 10 non swamps in our deck. What? Why didn't they kill Lugan? Caution, I mean, I'm glad they didn't, but why didn't they? All right, good job, Dread Presence. <laughs> yeah. Zero mana, Mind Stone.
I was hoping they were going to like double block and you know kill this one that's the Liliana. Another Castle Embereth. Jeez. Is that just lethal? Man, I activate both of them. I mean, it is. It is a lethal attack. So I guess I gotta just trade. Huh. Oh, they only have the mana to activate one? Oh. Well, that's better. Crisis. We actually played land drops and then played a Crisis. Yay, we did what the deck's supposed to do. Oh yeah, I guess I could have played the Swamp and killed something. I don't know, I, I was too excited with the Crisis. I didn't realize what was going on. Yeah, if we lose by two life, you can you can remind me. I mean, well, technically it would have been it would have been five life here because we would have killed I would have killed one of these one ones. They're flooding out over there, but they don't have Hydro Crisis. Can you gain life? Now, now, don't be pushy. Mindstone's been awesome. Rise and shine. I guess I wanted to play the Murderous Rider, but maybe I shouldn't in case of, you know, another Hellkite. I should hold up the Swift End. I was planning on playing the Life Linking Creature, though. All right. Yeah, Mindstone is the best. Did I not take out the Phyrexian Arenas? Thought I did. I guess not. Back in with the trolls. Okay, we're one on one. Uh, for the games, that is. Stone's so good. Huh. 
Come on, deck, let us hit land drops again. That was so fun. Yay. Let's say that was so fun when we got to hit land drops. Um. The reason to not play Mindstone here is if they have Rekindling Phoenix next turn, which I kind of feel like their their turn's going to be Rekindling Phoenix. I want to Murderous Rider it and then untap in Chupacabra. Now the problem with not playing the Mindstone is now I don't get to play Ugin. But that's okay. Now we get to play Ugin on an empty battlefield. Lamp. Truth lies beyond vision. I enjoy crazes. See a pony. Oh, I think they did play Mindstone before. I was going to say they need. And tell them they need mind stones, but I think they did play mind stone. Of the obeys me. All right, so there's fires. What can they do? They can Phoenix. So I'm not triggering the Dread Presence, but get another green source in play. I guess, I guess the adding this up, the playing the swamp would have been lethal. Put him down to two. Oh well. All right, in the win column, one and two. Let's turn this around. Let's let's win three in a row. Let's go three and two. There's a lot of stuff about the deck I like. All right, hopefully a creature deck. Hoping for a creature deck. I know, I miss Lethal so bad. So we need to drown Catacomb next turn. Gotta save the swamps for the Dread Presence. Ooh, play four Burning Trees. Keep going. Darn. Do I just wait? I think I'll wait on this. Swamp. Clackbridge Troll isn't great against Embercleave. Give him a bunch of creatures to attack with. Good thing Mindstone is just incredible.
Ooh, that's what we need. We need to make a Burning Tree Emissary Mind Stone deck. So, like, you Burning Tree and you get your two mana and you play your Mind Stone. Now we're talking. <laughs> Goat cleave. We used a ember cleave on a goat. Hmm. Play one return to nature to destroy Embercleave instead of one troll. Shapers Sanctuary. This will be a clutch return to nature. Be a clutch return to nature, destroying this shaper sanctuary. So many sanctuaries. Uh, this is Finger Eleven is the band uh, Paralyzer. Is the name of the song. This target of a spell. Let me see this. Or an ability. The. Alright, bringing in the other Return to Nature. Yeah, play things that die to soot. No, not Questing Beast. Uh, not a third Questing Beast. Liliana would have been a whole lot better than Ugin.
Chupacabras, where are you? We need more Chupacabras. We need the more Chup. Because this beast horror is a real Chuper. I don't know what I want to take out for this second return to nature. All these cards look pretty good. I guess a, I guess a Dread Presence. Who knows if we'll actually be able to trigger Dread Presence or not. Yeah, the third Questing Beast got me real good, but obviously the Shaper Sanctuaries were pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah, Questing Beast is pretty mean. It's a pretty mean card. Yeah, if you like mean cards, Questing Beast is, is right up your alley. Well, perfect start for the opponent. Shaper Sanctuary been looking looking real good here. I would normally kill if it wasn't for Sanctuary. Alright, come on, deck draw lands. Or re yeah, lands are green mana. I guess that's still lands. We need to draw lands. Good. One more. And then I can I can have Ugin kill the sanctuary. Stop. Questing Beast needs to draw a card also. That's what it needs. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. Yeah, yeah. No one knows Good the bear. wilds like I, I do. You don't have to kill. <clears throat> What am I supposed to do? Oh, jeez. Come on. They had two other creatures to play with the Questing Beast so that Vivian doesn't kill the Questing Beast with the Minus. That's ridiculous.
Yay, crisis. I I wouldn't there my opponent would not trade if I would attack. I I would not trade if I were on their in their spot. Pell collector is a lot more valuable than Chupacabra and their creatures are more valuable than mine and there's my their like my life total is more valuable than theirs. There's there's just no reason for them to attack. Or for them to trade if I would attack with the Chupacabras. such a good ritual of sit. I mean, it was really just a great crisis. Crisis. This isn't your average zombie tour. I do love a good death. Let's draw cards. Death. They were a lousy servant anyway. Hmm. That did not work out for me. Guess I should have ticked up. Especially with all these these lands that we've drawn. Um, Don't have another swamp. Trigger dread presence. We're drawing our non swamps. Yay, swamp. No, castle's not a swamp. Dang, that was so close. Could they gain like that extra life with the dread presence there? Man, Shaper Sanctuary was awesome. Those Bone Crusher Giants were good draws for sure. I I uh, messed up by minusing the Liliana to a Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, could have drawn another one. And would have killed me. 
Yeah, it came down to the wire. But we're two and two. Back to 500. Now let's get this winning record. <laughs> yeah. The first league was a three hour league. This one's been a little over an hour. GG's. That was an awesome match there. Down to the wire. Well, we've struggled quite a bit with hitting land drops. Why is it that whenever you keep like a one lander, you don't draw lands, and when you keep a six lander, you draw lands? So, of course, I want to get the cards that are not swamps out of my hand. That was a big time ritual of set with them getting stuck at two mana and all these things being five color things. Hmm. I think dealing two, gaining two is the way to go here instead of drawing a card with us with our life total under duress with the nickel bolas So I know I didn't trigger the Dread Presence, but I'd have to Shock to trigger the Dread Presence, and so it's like, why, like, lose two, gain two, if you're just, like, why lose two just to gain two? So this destroys a creature, a Planeswalker, that's green or white. All right, so that's blue, that's black, that's red. Want to say green or white? Gaining five life a turn right now. They're attacking for six. That's okay. <clears throat> so they're five color mana creature dot deck. <laughs> I'm so bad. All right, that was my bad. Well, I could have killed Nickel Bolas instead of killing Ravenous Chupacabra. 
Yeah, I I played my land for turn and triggered Dread Presence and then cracked Mindstone and drew another Dread Presence. And so I didn't get the second... Wasn't able to trigger the second one. I would just draw the card first. And then go to attacks and draw the card with control next. But oh well. Alright, definitely get this other Ritual of Sits in here. Gotta kill all these mana creatures. I think that's all I want to do. I mean, I could have... I mean, I guess like Moment of Cravings and Noxious Grasp do kill mana creatures also, but... I'm just gonna do that. And then kind of see... Play an extra Sit. And see what happens here. Yeah, both both of our first two losses were really affected by our land draws. The the Boros loss, I was really I was surprised about the Boros loss. The venerate like they just kind of had exactly what they needed, and I had exactly what I didn't need, kind of thing. Venerate Luxon in particular they kept on having Luxodons whenever I had Soots, and it was just a messy game. So love the set. Love the Mind Stone into set. I have to say I've been just thoroughly impressed with Mind Stone in this league. It has just been like the perfect card for this deck. We finally got to play for Phyrexian Arena. You know, like our major card draw card. Our huge engine. We finally got to play one. The first slot tomorrow is filled up. I can do any of the other slots. I can do, you know, second slot or any other slot. But I had a donation for... Yep, second slot sounds good. I'll write it down so I don't forget, but I really shouldn't forget. I don't think I will. Saturday second, four color gates. So honestly, we just had like some bad variants for the first two matches, but everything else looked pretty good after that, and, and including including Dread Presence looked very good. I think that the one card that didn't look good, and yeah, basically the, the card that, that didn't look good was the Clackbridge Troll, basically because we didn't really pressure the opponent. We didn't really kill the goats too well. Um... Yeah, this this deck definitely felt like a, a real deck for sure. Mindstone was just incredible. I think there's like some good, you know, like we have enough good removal for creatures and everything. What are better? I want like better incidental artifact and enchantment removal. That's not return to nature. That's like play like. Are there planeswalkers in historic that we can use? 
I don't know, we could play like, like Golgari Queen doesn't kill the stuff that we need. Vivian Vivian would be awesome but cost double green. What if we had some Vivians? That'd be awesome. Um We could definitely see this deck just playing Karns instead of Clackbridge Trolls. I think that's like my like the number one card that I kind of thought of was Karn. Oh, we could have six CMC for Asker, can't we? I guess is this card worse than Ugin? <laughs> Double green's not possible. I mean, not with that attitude. But yeah, realistically, it's probably not. I mean, you, we could play, you know, Temple of Malady and have more green mana there, but then we're probably not playing Dread Presence. I'm not sure if we'd want like four Karns. I kind of want a little bit more removal. And then Azorius Flyers for the third slot tomorrow. All right, perfect. We'll do it. Oh, Oko got banned. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're like, play Oko. And I was like, yeah, Oko would be really good. Contempt is the all-star. Yeah, we could have like cast down Contempt, Obnixilus Cruelty. Um... What else is just kind of missing from our deck? Like, is there anything that we're kind of overlooking. I need to make another Hypnotic Spectre deck. Hmm. Is Assassin's Trophy? Probably play Assassin's Trophy instead of Return to Nature. Just to be... Yeah, like, that's that's just a lot more versatile. Ooh, I like that. I like that. It does what you need to do, though. And destroys... It destroys the Ascanta that's already flipped. That's huge. Yeah, got to get rid of that as Kanta. Um, Ashiok's against Control and against Kethas. Ashiok was awesome for us. No, wrong Karn. This Karn really helps you hit land drops, which is good for Dread Presence. Those two work really well together. I think I would want like three of those, and then I want something else that costs something else that costs like two or three mana. That's a removal spell. This deck could play a Field of Ruin. Could play a Golos. Could play a Golos. Golos plays defense. Uh, fixes, you know, if you need blue or if you need green for Krasis. Grabs a Swamp for Dread Presence. Grabs a Castle. I like Golos. Yeah, Golos, Golos helps fix here. I like that. Um, Cabal Stronghold. Stronghold only uh, only checks basic swamps. So, like, not even, like, you know, like, this doesn't even do Watery Grave or Overgrown Tomb. So, no, this isn't a Stronghold deck. So, yeah, what if... All right, so now basically the next thing is do you have enough life gain for Arena? And I think so with the Dread Presence, and, like, these these can help. We kind of we saw, like, that last game. I, I think so. I think we have enough life gain for Arena. Yeah, so I like that. I like changing up the Clackbridge Trolls, having Karns and Golos instead.
and then changing out the yeah like i think that's just a, a good change there because you can we can still just play assassin's trophy against the aggro decks also you know like against like mono red and so on so there we go decks getting there I'm not sure if I'd want like two Golos, two Karn, or three Karn, one Golos, because Karn's kind of like Arena. Like, Karn doesn't affect the battlefield too much. You can minus two and make a Karn struct that can be like a two two if you play a Mind Stone and, and so on. But I could see playing a, a second Golos and. And that. We could play. I mean, I guess he could play one Chromatic Lantern. To be able to activate Golos and really help you cast Krasis. Could have, you know, could cut one Karn for one Chromatic Lantern. But I'm like in turn three Karn with Mindstone, you know, like Mindstone into Karn. Like that's pretty awesome. Get that card draw going. So yeah, maybe cutting an arena because of Karn for a Golos. Like these, that's kind of like the slots. Like maybe we play two arena, two Golos, three Karn. Um, you know, like those, those are like some things to kind of play around with if you're playing this later on. Uh, some good options here. I, I definitely think this is a, a pretty decent historic deck though. Um, and these could be some good updates here. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hope you enjoyed some mono black crisis. Hope you hit that like button over there and leave the comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. But that's it here. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.